Hi, this is Privateer Station. As Ukraine continues to deoccupy its eastern territories, we'll bring you the next episode in War Diaries Day 198 uh, with Alexei Rostovich, advisor to the Office of the President of Ukraine, and Mark Fagan, Russian opposition journalist. Enjoy! Dear friends, glad to see you all on Fagan Live. We're doing another stream, Day 198, with Alexei Rostovich. Today is Friday, September 9th, 3 minutes past 10 in Kyiv. Alexei, very glad to see you, likewise. We have almost 150,000 people watching us live, 20 plus thousand clicked the like button, expecting, expecting a lot of news, and I think uh, they are in luck, because today we actually can discuss a lot more things. We'll be naming names, right? Okay, let's uh, start with problems. The Ukrainian army has a huge problem. And the problem is that we don't know where to put prisoners of war. We gathered so many of them that um, we don't know what to do with them. Why is it happening? We can acknowledge now. The president is uh, giving a speech as we are streaming here. I'm getting messages in parallel. 60% of uh, occupied Kharkov region is uh, liberated. This is, uh, you can see the map, this is what we went during through during two days. Uh, this is not all, there is also another offensive coming up north from Izum. And Russian army has a lot more troubles there. Um, your sound is disappearing, Alexei. Will be condemned by our listeners. Please put the headphones with the mic. So, I'm commenting Russian media, saying that uh, Ukrainians, Ukrainian army is attacking Izum. There is a ton of data. Let, let me be orderly. We captured a lot of equipment, a lot of military personnel. Izum group is almost isolated. There is a uh, one path left to the east, but uh, according to data, that bridge has been blown. That's near Askol, right? That was the only bridge that they used for resupply. So they're isolated. Consider them their an isolated group around the Zoom. And what is coming now in the media is discussion about offensive. Uh, around the Zoom itself. Uh, our intel confirms that 237th detachment of uh, Russian paratroopers uh, is uh, no more. 230th, I think, is also abandoned by their commanders, and our army is uh, taking them as prisoners. This is kind of like what tsunami was happening there. We captured a ton of armor, toss uh, armored infantry vehicles, a lot of ammo for them. And if Russian chats are correct, and to be believed, we are finishing a Zoom group, and this is probably thousands of captured uh, militants. Um, and by the way, there is also an operating base for of the army level somewhere near Zoom, so it's interesting to see what will happen to them. So this is a proper military catastrophe for them, just like they taught you at school. But the main thing is not that. The main thing is that Russian command also gathered additional reserves. They dropped some of them by air. Some of them were motorized in Belgorod region in Russia. They put all the scribes and everybody, I guess, even janitors in their military facilities on the armor and brought them to the front. But instead of doing it proper, instead of doing gathering intel, organizing a new defense line, they're just riding that armor into the battle. 
and people who have never really fought professionally are trying to create some semblance of counteroffensive, and they pretty much die uh, in the next few minutes as they start the fight. There was one commander who sort of knew what he was doing. He tried to actually aggregate the troops and get more intel, but uh, we hit the more artillery and um, that group dispersed as well. So we were expecting them to follow military standards and start gathering reserves and creating the second and third uh, lines of resistance, but nobody expected that they would be doing it so idiotically. They're just gathering them and throwing them without any order. This is sort of like a big whirlpool, sucking all the Russian military in, as if our Ukrainian which is uh, were successful and uh, that whirlpool is just eating them up. I'm already tired of going through all the pictures that I'm being sent. Our guys from the front are sending me dozens, I don't know exact number of prisoners were captured, but uh, it's a lot. It's difficult to calculate proper data. President uh, voiced over 30 villages and settlements over 1500 square kilometers but I would say one can say farewell to that Izum group that was there 20th army and the tank uh, group they were kind of unsuccessful they failed near Kiev near Sumy near Chernigov and they're considered to be elite divisions right Tamanska and Timirovska back in the Second World War days they had some glory um, and if they are so weak, then what's up with the rest? And what is amazing is really idiotic management, the leadership of Russian military. They just don't know what to do, as I mentioned before, when they're losing. Against all military rules, they're throwing their reserves, non-organized reserves, I would even say disorganized. And everything that could have been uh, rather problematic for us to overcome eventually is burning, is burning like a hay in fire. We'll see what's happening and we'll know some news in the morning, but I suspect the news will be much brighter tomorrow. Can one gauge the numbers of uh, perished? Uh, our guys are saying that yeah, Russian army is really being destroyed right now. I'm hesitant to say thousands, but definitely hundreds. Any destiny about Samara special police detachment? Special group of uh, fast reaction, but uh, I don't know exact destiny of those guys, but I've seen the bloody t-shirts from that group. Their insignia? Yeah, yeah, from those police uh, special forces. Okay, over 200,000 are watching us, uh, about a quarter of you left, uh, click the like button. Uh, do not forget to click like, that's important. Subscribe to Fake in Life, to Alexei Rostovich and to the privateer station. Alexei is uh, in field trips now, but, so he may not have any other updates besides our videos, but um, please subscribe. All right, so can we say that reserves the ones that are being thrown into the fight now if it is indeed the third uh, army corps not just the third corps but including third corps so what we discussed yesterday the thin red line that they had they're still hoping to resist and to push back why am i asking this because Konoshenko, uh, the speaker for russian military is quiet uh, they have an uh, urgent meeting of uh, Russian Security Council with Putin, so maybe they're still hoping to win back part of the lost territory, and they're quiet. That is what uh, just making everything worse, worse I think. Um, take it back, push back, I don't know. One of the extreme versions they could do is announce uh, general mobilization because then I would be asking Ukraine to give a hero of Ukraine order to Putin because that would be the fastest way to stop that war. I can only imagine if cadre divisions fight like that, like we have now, I, I can imagine what uh, disorganized guys uh, mobilized all over the country will do. I think they'd rather go and topple Putin and take Kremlin instead.
What else can they do? Threaten us with nukes? United States and China will step in, um, send strategic aviation. They can't really do that. Uh, strategic goals and we're tactical on the ground, they'll be useless. Uh, shoot calibers, they keep shooting that, nothing new. Ask for peace, um, okay, that is an interesting option, but uh, there would be terms. Uh, you know, they're idiots. They might actually ask you to capitulate, right? Peace talks and capitulation. Um, yeah, it's hard to predict their leadership. Well, we warned these idiots, right? Stop it. Mark, we were even better. We told them before the war, we had several streams, probably three days before the war, where I described that's what's going to happen. But they were somehow hoping for some mythical Russian spirit and mighty Putin's arms will reform the whole world and recapture the whole Europe. Ask those thousands that are decaying in the fields now. All right, well, um, we'll wait also till the times when uh, their soldiers will start pushing back on Kremlin. That'll be interesting. How do you think that offensive and that uh, event affected Bakhmut theater? And Bakhmut direction, amazingly, they continued to push and they continued to try to capture the goals set to them quite a few weeks ago. Uh, the same attacks where they acknowledged that they destroyed their motivated and trained infantry. And they continue doing those uh, senseless pushes. Uh, they actually had good infantry. This infantry is uh, storm infantry is very pricey to train, very difficult to train. You cannot use mobilized, freshly mobilized people to replace them. And they wasted them. They wasted them at our defenses on the Bakhmut front. And you think they got no chances to defend? Or maybe capture, maybe still capture Solidar, uh, Bakhmut. No, Mark, I told you, Lysychansk and Severodonetsk were the last ones they captured in this war. Well, I'm just saying, you know, the logic is if they lost something somewhere, they maybe capture something somewhere. No, no, they, they just keep continuing to realize the same plan that they had before on surrounding Bakhmut. And uh, for some reason, they're ignoring uh, what is actually unfolding to the north of them. I'm sorry for that Skype logo. Uh, Alexander Nivzorov is trying to call me simultaneously. Yeah, sorry, Alexander, not today, not now. Um, well, let's go south. What is uh, happening near Donetsk? There are different uh, messages coming from that area. Apparently, there is some motion. Our side is not commenting. And as far as I know, the Russian troops are still trying to push with the previous orders. Everything changed. That's funny. Uh, the whole front is changing and they continue to push according to the old orders. Remember I said Napoleon used to say that to be successful militarily you need uh, a little bit of luck and idiotic uh, foe and what they're doing is idiocy, is madness. I don't know how to describe that in other terms but imagine if a surgeon comes to operate puts his hands in uh, cow manure, then puts his hands in some garbage bin and then starts surgery without any painkillers and uh, anesthesia and in, in the dark, just guessing what he is cutting. And that's what it looks like in the military uh, side, because they're breaking every basic rule that uh, one should and would learn at the first year of military academy. And they keep making these mistakes, all of these mistakes. Syrian army is probably 10 times uh, better fighter than Putin's army. Well, you just put them lower than where they were, 120th position now. Yeah, they're like 200th uh, step now instead of 120. Uh, yeah, Putin is a master. Putin is a real master of bringing down his own military. Um, what's happening on the right bank? On the right bank, our troops of uh, the right bank of Dnieper, near Kherson, on the right side, our troops continue kicking them, uh, pushing them down. And the main thing is that we keep destroying all the bridges and pontoons they try to put over the river. 
just about like two hours ago we destroyed another one that they built and these guys need four or five tons of ammo per day just to continue their resistance and getting maybe a third of that we'll probably hold for another two three weeks and then after that there'll be a cascade toppling I don't see how they can resolve anything there is no other way for them to change situation there so do they need reserves there because they're all throwing all of them to the eastern front right of course they do need reserves but how pontoons without uh, any trucks or any armor they're idiots we called them into that trap actually you and me played our part in that and when they all came there all of a sudden they're disconnected 25 battalion tactical groups are cut off pretty good infantry uh, airborne troops uh, paratroopers mechanized infantry pretty good uh, units the ones that have experience and the ones that could have uh, fought but now they're just locked in that area and they cannot neither advance nor leave okay anything else uh, Putin can possibly do besides nukes mobilization I'm just going to I just want to reconstruct that meeting that he has now the Security Council he's sitting there and asking so what can we do he'd probably ask them what can you do in reality and they probably will tell him we can move some troops it'll take some time if they're smart they'll tell him that you need to withdraw to shrink the front line protect your sides exactly yes according to the military science that we are supposed to do you can probably also say farewell to your son group about 30,000 troops that we lost in the next couple of weeks that's about a sixth part of overall Russian forces that invaded Ukraine and if they were smart they would have actually told him that we not only can continue offensive we can probably not be able to defend ourselves very soon so he'll probably be raging asking if they can throw more troops use uh, strategic aviation if they're smart they'll respond that strategic aviation cannot resolve any strategic uh, issues that are remaining moving troops is a lot of logistics and maybe additional five days for that motion after which Ukrainians will likely hit that same spot where we concentrate our troops to so this is uh, generally a really bad situation some people are saying you are hinting you are giving clues and ideas to the Russian side oh no mark I don't even see that this way remember Russian classic Saltykov Shadrin who said if you put him to sleep and wake him hundred years later he'll say Russia still has the same things the drinking and being rowdy and it's the same thing with the military it's a genetic code of Russian military they cannot take our advice they need to rebuild the whole thing from schools to millet to army to everything remember how Churchill said uh, give me enough power like a school teacher and I don't need prime minister prime uh, position of prime minister so our school is different our school has enough energy and force and improvisation and their school is also showing itself a lot of money wasted for nothing and soldiers fleeing there was a good uh, video today when the uh, Russian tank is fleeing from uh, one soldier and Russian tank uh, that was actually a tank from that one of the elite troops they don't they're not even shooting back they're just driving back so fast that his troopers are falling off the armor so I think now they're reaching another position that uh, Russian generals are figuring out they will be made responsible for that failure oh exactly that'll be a very interesting decision to make there because it's either soldiers responsibility or it's Putin's I think that Security Council is probably very dramatic at the moment there's probably some screaming going on oh exactly yes 
the dumbest thing they can do is try to continue the strategy and continue to push. Although everybody knows, even kids at school are being taught that if you want to get a different result, you need to try something new. All right, let's uh, maybe discuss the reaction, because all pro-Putin's uh, forums, they're just screaming in horror, in panic and hatred to their own leadership, actually. Propaganda is silent. Even Putin's propaganda is quiet. There is nothing to say. Peskov made a statement today, but uh, all the military are quiet. And that kind of points to where the shoe will drop. Congratulations with uh, becoming the patsies, uh, Russian generals, because you really have no choice. Either we bury you here in Ukraine or you bury Putin over in Kremlin. By the way, by burying Putin there, you actually can buy uh, an out-of-jail card, because that'll be a big excuse for a lot of your actions. Otherwise, you're done. He'll be, he'll be destroying you, and then we'll be destroying you as well. And they'll be blaming you and putting you in prison. And if you decide to continue this war through winter, then uh, our HIMARS will tell hi on your winter quarters. We have over 405,000 watching us live. I have a mysterious phrase I can say now, but you'll probably be asking for details. I will not be giving details, but I can say the phrase. Very good news from Rammstein. But unfortunately, I cannot give you any details. But the winter will be if they survive until winter. The winter will be peaches, peaches. Okay, so what do you think we'll be able to give more details? When official representatives will give the news, we can discuss that. So probably partners will speak first, then our officials will, if they will comment on that, because the news is so good that maybe they're not worth making public, maybe make them known after these news are converted into practical use. Yeah, these news probably need to fall on somebody's head first and then become proper news in the media. Okay, we got you. Then let's continue. Well, since you've said that, I don't think we have to discuss ammo supplies. Yeah, we can discuss additional howitzers, ammo, minesweepers, Humvees. That's all in the American package, enumerated. But in reality, the news are much better. Well, look, Stoltenberg actually made a statement. He was very careful for a while, and now he says that they need to deploy more troops on the east, and that NATO will be defending its, each inch of its territory. And he also made a statement that if Ukraine stops fighting, it will stop. Uh, it will mean uh, stopping of its existence. So that's a pretty good statement from them. And they do realize finally that their eastern front is supported by Ukraine, and behind Ukraine are big uh, NATO guys with big weapons who are always ready to come and help. Yep, that is a good, straightforward statement. Now, in this situation, if your offensive will continue, what is the chance for maybe uh, expedited membership of Ukraine in NATO? I don't think it will be discussed until the end of war, but after the war, that will be a different story. And I don't think we'll have to wait too long, right? Yeah, we'll need to destroy the uh, Russian army here, and they will also have a different situation in Russia. And Ukraine will likely be a donor of safety and security for Europe after the war. And many people in NATO already understand that, that you are their safety card. And that's our claim. Uh, if you want to save your soldiers and save your people, give us weapons. Yes, and give us membership. Yep, that would be their best investment into, into their security. You know, sometimes we discuss things and then they happen. 
it's not because they are listening to us, but I think it's people following the same logic that we are discussing here. Your uh, bosses on Bank of uh, Bank, Bank of Sky Street in Kiev, they're following the same logic, right? Yep, my leadership knows pretty well what uh, they're doing and they continue and uh, very insistent in achieving their goals. Okay, another thing I wanted to say, new king, Karl, Karl III, yes, the third. Prince of Wales was announced to be the next in line. Of course, Moscow sent their condolences regarding the passing of uh, Elizabeth. But of course, they said that they're not going to the funeral. Uh, nobody understands why they're not coming, because nobody really was inviting them. Alexei, are you here with us? Um, he's in field conditions, and I think his uh, screen is stuck. Let's see if we can do something, or give him time maybe to reconnect. In the meantime, I want to say we have 422,000 watching us. Over 130,000 of you clicked the like button. Please click that if you have not done it yet. I'll also remind you that uh, please subscribe to Fagin Live, to Alexei and to the privateer station. We are trying to dial him back. Please uh, hang tight and subscribe. While you're waiting, yeah, click that subscribe button to not miss anything. Click that little bell thing while you're at it. And Alexei is on his uh, field trips every time he's out there, that Wi-Fi internet is sucky. Uh, if you're in any hotel, very often the quality is subpar. I often bring my own router with me to mitigate that. And what you see, I actually stream from different locales, so that helps me to travel and to solve that issue. While we're trying to get Alexei back, you know, in Russia they have elections in autumn, and I'm turning to Russians on behalf of different groups who are asking to boycott them, write something, no to war, other things on your bulletins, because, you know, nobody is counting your votes there anyway. Just write no to war. Our friends suggested that. Uh, we'll see how it works. I think it's the good uh, voting in Russia on these uh, pseudo-elections. I think it's an interesting FU towards the current power in Kremlin. You can try that. And the second, well, we have a little bit uh, of unexpected pause. I would not want to interrupt the stream. I do remind you that we do have our merchandise project working. And we also are working to maybe make it available in Russia. There is a chance that it will come true shortly. So get ready that you can also buy them in Russia. Although I would not advise you to wear these t-shirts out in the street, but mugs, you know, kitchen aprons and pillows, you can probably order and enjoy that at home. Yeah, don't put it on yourself out in the street. There are too many screwed up people at the moment in Russia. We still hope Alexei comes back. I hope you can still hear me well, because you're saying the sound is weak. I don't know why it appears to be here. I see the graph. Uh, I see you in the chat. Sound, sound. I don't know, dear friends. Um, I hope you're talking about Aristovich, because I think my sound is still on. Let me ping him again here. Just a sec. Okay. 
Let's see what happens. Yeah, uh, people are writing that my sound is all right. I'm trying to dial Alexei again. Alexei? Yes, I'm here. Tell us when you'll be back to the proper internet. Oh, uh, there's all kind of villainly happening here, so I'm back. We can speak again. I was entertaining our viewers, telling them other things, maybe not as important as the ones we are discussing now, but in your view, Britain, do you think their politics will intensify a little? with all the changes given that offensive is rather successful with the Ukrainian military. I would say according to Rammstein results, we should not be worried. So you think that everything we prognosticated about that Land lease and other support that is uh, supposed to start, I think, in October. Right, I think uh, October 1st is the new finance fiscal year, so yeah. Oh, sorry, my video is uh, all over the place. Okay, one second. We had a bit of a technical issue here. Do you know that uh, Kharkov re region citizens are being evacuated or forced for relocated by force uh, by Russian military? Oh, I can only imagine mobilized Kharkov citizens who see and understand what's going on and understand that in two hours after being thrown in the front, they'll be in the arms of Ukraine troops. They'll probably just turn the arms around against the mobilizers. Do you think it's technically possible, guys? Should, should your command, Russian commanders? Oh yeah, I think it's uh, not even a question. Our, our folks are really pretty bright in this way. They'll find a way to not go to fight, to surrender, or to get rid of their idiotic commanders uh, implanted from Russia. I'm reading some public news in Russia. Piskov was asked to comment about uh, on, the, on the words of uh, Turchak, who said that uh, occupied territories should be done uh, Referendum should be done in November, and also Crimean leader of Russia, Russian leader in Crimea said that these territories should just be attached to Russia without any voting. And Peskov commented that, um, of course, people need to uh, vote for their position and we should give them a chance to do so. Oh yeah, they, they are, I think Ukraine military is really coming to vote, to take part in that voting. We're coming to yeah to help with the proper voting in that region. Okay, another question. European Council confirmed that they're stopping simplified uh, visas for Russian citizens. So long-term visas are gone for them. Review times are increasing from 15 to 45 days, where it's 45 days, it likely can be 90 or more. They're also increasing the amount of paperwork needs to be done and uh, decrease the windows when they will be accepting that. And they said that we, you know, we need to consider our safety because we don't know who's coming. And I think that could be a sign of uh, every coming, every visitor to Europe will need to sign or answer a question. How do you treat the Russian invasion of Ukraine? And if the Russian citizen says that 
he supports uh, Russian war in Ukraine, then he goes to some deeper place in Russia for his vacation. And if he says, I am against that, he has a chance to see the beauty of Europe. Do you think that situation will likely to escalate with visas? A lot of people are asking. Do you think there is any insight here? Yeah, it is, I think, same as sanctions. Very easy to start, and then it gets a little harder and harder to escalate. I remember the main gates they used, Turkey and Baltic countries. Baltic countries said they are not taking those visas. They're just not letting the tourists through. And uh, yeah, yeah, they'll all start using Turkey. And Turkey would probably be closing the door very slowly. And also the price of visa will grow, not substantially, up to 80 euros or something. But now it's more of a bureaucratic question. Can you get it? All right, look, uh, we have a pretty bad connection today and pretty bad sound. We've been 35 minutes live and I suggest maybe, yeah, let's continue tomorrow. I hope tomorrow you'll have a better situation. We'll try to resolve the technical issues here. And we're trying to keep picture and sound good. So we discuss the main news and I think we'll continue tomorrow. And everything will be as usual tomorrow at 10 p.m. Please uh, be here tomorrow. There'll be more good news. Hang on. I promise to send uh, a warm hello to my Lithuanian friends. I'm sending hello to all Lithuanian people and their leadership and government and those people who provided me some food while I was traveling. So what, you got uh, extra food in the restaurant? In a small restaurant near the road. They recognized me and hugged and uh, fed. If not for you, it would have been a bit, a bit more difficult. So thank you, thank you for your support. Amazing. Figen is... Figen wants to join our storage. You're traveling and you're eating and you're being treated. Yeah, I was on the road and I just stopped to grab something and they got me. Uh, your time will come. You're more known than me. I don't see that, unfortunately. I'm sitting here in front of computer the whole time. So I, I don't really walk much. It's a little easier for you. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Don't disappear. Goodbye, dear viewers.